Alright guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be doing a body language analysis of Butcher from The Boys on Amazon. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. It's fantastic. Two seasons out now. Um, brilliant show and Butcher is kind of the epitome of what we're trying to teach. A little bit more aggressive, but he is kind of the epitome of what we're trying to teach with this with this body language behavior. Standing up for yourself and being a true outspoken, old school man. All right then boys, let's get this started. Excuse me. Do you have something you'd like to share? No, no, apologies. Please do. Uh... We can already see here on the left, let's do, um, this is Huey, right? Look at this negative body language. Hands tucked in, you know. She, she, what she's done is she's spoken up and she said, "Excuse me, have you got something to share?" As in, like two naughty kids that have been caught in class. And look at him, eyes down, negative body language, everything tucked into this tight ball. You know, it's very submissive. It's not how you want to appear as a man. Shoulders are sloped. It's just not a nice look. Uh, whereas, as we see here from Butcher, he's still sitting upright. You know, his arms are folded. Um, but it's not too much of a problem because his chin is elevated, his eye contact is still good. You know, he's not falling within himself and saying, okay, you know, she's she's fanned me out. I'm, I'm in the submissive role here. He never backs down from anybody. Continue the escapades. We and even makes a joke there with the escapades. We don't make jokes or judgments here. Look how strong that eye contact is. We can see a clear differential here. Look, we've got his eye contact solid as a rock hasn't moved, actually slightly smirking. And then we've got Huey looking down, negative, looking like a frail, weak man. Why don't you take the talking stick and tell us your story? Nah. Same again, great eye contact. Body, head, doesn't move, stays in the same position and says, one word answer, nah. Which is, uh, as I've told you guys before, the shorter responses, which we see, which is synonymous with Tommy Shelby, it really goes a long way. Usually the less words you say as a man, the better. There's a lot of men out there that all they want to do is justify themselves and explain why they've spoken, why they've made the decision that they've made, and they'll use 50 extra words rather than 10 or 1. I'm good. You know, I've seen guys like you before. Oh, seriously, don't I? That's, you know, confidence bordering on arrogance. When she says, I've seen guys like you before, I seriously doubt that. And again, he doesn't move. And sometimes it doesn't actually matter what you say. It's the way in which you say it. And what Butcher's very good at, maybe the best I've ever seen, along with Tommy Shelby, but for different reasons, is the congruency of his body language. So he has very, you know let's say, aggressive body language. He's very confident, very assertive. He never backs down from anybody. And then the words that he says are exactly the same. And then his tonality, again, is exactly the same. And his actions, the stuff that he actually does in the show, is exactly the same. And it's that congruency that brings the whole, the whole image together, the character. The smirk, the jokes. It's all a defense mechanism, but you don't have to... Again, we can see holding the eye contact. Hasn't broken once for a couple of, probably five, ten seconds here. Uh, just in this scene alone, you know, it's been a lot longer. But Huey, broken, he's looking straight at him. You can, you, you can see that Huey's being affected. Butcher isn't. To do that here, this is a safe space. I said I'm good. And again, this is important because this is more of a lifestyle thing rather than body language. But when somebody tries to break you down, you know, when people... I've, I've set, met women in clubs and stuff that have been like, oh, I've met guys like you before. You know, you're, you're just scared of settling down. You're like, no, like, not at all. When women say, oh, all of your views on marriage and your anti-relationships and stuff, it's just because you're scared to be hurt. It's like, no, this isn't a movie. This isn't sex in the city. Trust me. I just, I'm staying away from that shit. And uh, that's what he's done there. She's tried to use psychology and break him down. I've seen guys like you before. It's just a defense mechanism. Again, he just reinforces his point. No, I'm good. And that's what I mean about the congruency. It's everything that he does and says and the way he moves. It all comes together 
to kind of suit this narrative that he is this bad kind of anti-hero Deadpool type character with unbelievable body language and aggression. It's very good. Time to move on. That eye contact there was piercing. Look at this, guys. Time to move on. Go ahead, Seth. Give him. He's almost looking through the woman. And again, we can see there, you know, he's just, he's darted out of his chair. He's confronted the guy. And like, I'm not saying to do this, guys, but there's definitely something missing in the modern era where guys are willing to just kind of kick back and just somebody's forcing something on them and they're willing to take it. You know, I think aggression does actually get you a long way. I did that video the other day about male aggression helping you succeed in life. I think elements of this should be incorporated into your life. You know, I think he's overreacting here. But there's a lot of scenarios in life where you need to react like this and just put people in their place. Just quit being a cunt, that's what I'm saying. You back off. That's quite, um, that's quite noticeable for body language purposes. He's invading his private space there, so he's pushing that into the guy. And uh, you know, he's putting that into... Like, it's, it's pretty close to his face. We can see here, it's not that far away. So he's invading his private space. And, um, you know, as soon as you do that, you're kind of taking... I don't like using the term, but alpha, let's say, more dominant advantage. That's what it is. You know, you see Donald Trump's handshakes. I'll break them down at some point as well, but the way he kind of forces the other person's hand into, he, he kind of drags that person's hand into his own body and then puts his own hand on the bottom of the handshake. It's a submissive move, but he's doing it on purpose because he's kind of saying, look, I'll, I'll let you have a one up. Like, I'll help you. I'll be seen as the nicer guy. I'll be seen as helping you out. It's like a little trick that he does. Um, but here, this is kind of a form of pushing your hand into that person's hand and pushing them back. It's as dominant as it can be. Back off, or I'll shove this stick where your dick used to be. Again, as I've explained to you guys before, the whispering, when you get close to people whispering, and uh, being able to talk and hold eye contact at the same time. It's a very difficult thing to do. Butcher does it brilliantly. But on the topic of whispering, because I'd rather educate than just tell, when you whisper, people really listen intently to what you're saying, and it makes your words a lot more important. You're a bunch of pathetic soup worshipping cunts. Now, on the topic of how much he swears, I swear a lot as well. Um, it's, it's a dangerous tactic because it can be seen as rude. It can be seen as not very classy. You know, it's probably not the best behaviour to just. You, you probably shouldn't go into your office on Monday morning. And be like, fuck you, you cunt, your boss. Just because you think it'll get you a pay rise because you'll be the alpha. You know, you're probably going to get fired. There's, there's a level of manners to it as well. But these sort of words are emphasis words. They're very dominant. They're very aggressive. When you use curse words or swear words, you do kind of garner attention. You know, when somebody says something like, fucking hell, everybody's going to turn their head and wonder what the hell's going on. It definitely draws people into what you're saying. And when used effectively at the right time with emphasis, it can work wonders. I bet you'd thank a soup if they shat on your mum's best china. Did it ever occur to you that they split your spine or broke your dick? Again, it's the congruency for me. That's what I love. Like the fact that we can see here, he's doing the same thing I showed you guys earlier, where he's pointing this in somebody's face. Very aggressive move. It's invading their private space, like I said, but the way that he's speaking as well. It's, it's very, like I said, everything is emphasized. Everything is said with kind of a daggered tongue. It's, it's very, it's coming out like a grunt, almost like, fuck you, kind of like that. Everything's coming out, it's being forced out. It's the congruency of his body language, the words he's saying and the way that he's saying them. That they split your spine or broke your dick just for a laugh. Where's your fucking rage? Can you see the changes as well in his tonality? So, broke your dick. You know, the little whisper, where's your rage? And then going up at the other end. He's kind of doing different elevations because it draws you in. Now, if somebody's reading a storybook and they're using the same tonality, it, it, kind of, it sometimes it can capture you because it makes you feel kind of sleepy you're just going along with the story it's kind of like story time you're just relaxed and listening in but when somebody talks like that you listen when somebody talks like this sorry like butcher you listen intently for different reasons you're listening intently because 
you gravitate towards characters like this. You know, so many, I, I think in this era as well, this is enormous because there's so many weak men in this world now that when we find a character like this, we're all drawn in because we kind of wish we could be like this or we wish we could handle scenarios like this. Your self-respect! Sitting here in your little sheer circle, having a little whinge and a moan, fuck letting go. He should be out there with a fucking chainsaw going after him. Again, he's doing the, look, the finger point. It's another form of aggression. But the one thing I want to pick up on here for you guys is the fact that he's walked into the middle of the circle. And if we take it back, we can see that he's speaking to everybody. So I think around about here. Fuck letting go. He should be out there with a fucking chainsaw going after him. Sorry, let me take it back further. Okay, so I think it's about here. Dear circle. Having a little whinge and a moan. Fuck letting go. He should be out there. So we saw the way there that he's in the middle of the circle. He's looking at everybody and he's making his way around the circle, which is, which is dominant behavior. You know, if you ever look at animals, they'll take up as much space as possible. And there's a rule that kind of when you sit down in a new place or you sit down at your desk, per se, that if you took your phone and your wallet out and you started, I, I used to do this naturally. I, I, when I found out what it was, I was like, oh, it makes sense. But I used to take my phone out, my wallet out, put them at different areas on the table, start spreading all my stuff out, you know, kind of take control of the desk, the space around me, you know, just start grabbing maybe another chair to put your feet up on or something like that. You start accumulating resources and space. And that's kind of what he's doing here is he's walking around slowly and it, his sl slowness of movement is fantastic. And um, he's taking up as much space as possible and he's kind of walking around the group, looking at everybody individually, which just displays how much he's controlling every single person in this room. And like I said, just taking up as much space as possible, showing that he is the dominant figure out of everybody here. With a fucking chainsaw going after him. Just a bunch of scared fucking rabbits. And the fact that he's just dropped that on the floor as well and walked away is, is kind of like disrespect. He's just taken up as much space as possible, like I said. He's taken their share stick straight off the guy, and then when he's done with it, he's just dropped it, kind of carefree. And I'm not saying this is good behavior, guys, but it is just a breakdown of certain clips. You know, I can't decide what's in these clips. It, it is what it is. But... The way that he's just dropped it on the floor carefree, just kind of like, fuck you, your little shitty share stick. Do you know what I mean? It's um, it's a very aggressive natured behavior as well. And then coupled with what I'm about to show you now is, again, the congruency of what he does. Like every act that he does, every movement that he does, everything that he says or the way he says it is congruent with the character that he's playing. And I told you guys before, congruency is so key to what you're trying to portray. If you're trying to be this big... You know, if you're a big muscular guy and you, you think, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to go down that alpha male route, I'm going to bully people, I'm going to be like this, you're going to get found out very quickly if you're not actually that type of guy, you know, and if you're bullying people, you're going to look like a dick anyway, and you just need to find the congruent way of doing things, and there might be a guy who's like that, who's turning their head constantly, seeing who's looking at them, every woman that walks past, he's turning his head, and he's moving too quickly, and women can see straight through it. They're like, oh no, he's fake. He's putting on an act. He put on some muscle. He thinks he's somebody who's not. Congruency is massive. But here we can see the, sl the slowness of movement again. Watch the way he walks away with his arms. You can see in a second I'll show you, but his arms are out wide. He's moving slowly and he, he has what is, I don't know what to coin it. I want to kind of come up with a phrase for it, but it's like the GTA thug sway. The way that a lot of these dominant men with good body language, the way they walk, they kind of let their body sway left to right. It's a very dominant move. Watch this. Suits are all the same. Every fucking one of them. So we'll go back. I'll show it again. So you see it there. It's kind of like a... It's very weird with the arms. The tone of somebody's body allows the arms to stay outwards and wide but obviously with good body language you're going to keep them wider you know you're not going to have them by your side looking pathetic and weak and submissive but the arms are out wide but what these people do is they let their arms kind of sway as they walk you know it's a very carefree i would say gorilla like walk let's watch this again let's go back Suits 
Central assign every fucking one of them. Okay, so let's move over to the second clip. All right, easy does it, lad. So, a very strong entrance. He, he, the way he's thudding down those stairs, very deliberate steps. You know, he's slamming his foot down on each step. He's moving pretty slowly. Um, it's a very dominant entrance here. He's, immediately, he's taking control of the room. It's easy, does it? I, I tried to tell this The fact that he threw his bag on the floor in front of him as well, again, it's, it was like the stick scene. He's taking up space. You know, somebody who is a dominant individual, somebody who does have good body language, they will place their items in people's personal space, they will dominate the room, they'll start taking over places, they'll put their feet or their arm on a desk or something and take up more space, and then people kind of move around them. It's very, it's very subtle the way they do it. Can't. I'm a fat law. Yeah. What the fuck? The fact he has guns pointed at him as well and he's very relaxed, he's calm, his tonality hasn't changed at all. It says a lot about the character. What are you wearing? That is a good question. Again, there's the point. He's doing the point. Even at range, it's very dominant behavior. You know, you're pointing right at somebody. When people say it's rude to point, I, I just think not having your arms by your side tucked in as close to your body is a great thing to do. You know, people who walk around like that, who don't, they're scared to move their limbs. I think anybody with good body language who is dominant, who's taken seriously in life, they don't mind pointing, putting their arms out wide, you know, taking up space, like I said, and just casting a much bigger shadow as such, or a much bigger frame. That's what they're doing. They're, they're monotonizing the space around them. It's great to see. You call them. I'm sorry, but you is not a game now. We need a real captain. French is right. This is a fucking mess. That tonality again there is kind of like a, a grunting whisper. This is a fucking mess, son. You know, he gets really close to him as well. Look at, look at the distance between them. I know it's not a profile, it's not side on, but he gets really, really close and holds that eye contact whilst talking. Every, like I said, everything's congruent in the previous clip. That's exactly how he does it. Done. We got a suit. Even there, he seemed to move like another step closer, but he never breaks eye contact. So he did that turn thing. I said to you guys before, when you turn your head, but you hold eye contact, watch this. Son, we got a soup terrorist. See, so he's kind of turning his head, he's moving his body, but he holds that eye contact. It's very hard to do, but if you can, it's very much like when you talk and hold eye contact at the same time. When you do those um, congruent things, and they're difficult skills, they are real skills, but they're difficult to do. But when you do things like that at the same time, when you kind of turn your head, move around, hold eye contact, but still keep talking, it's very hard to do. Not a lot of people can do it. Um, the best thing to do, though, like I said to you guys before, is to be stationary, stand still, hold eye contact and talk. You know, if you're moving around and fidgeting, it's not great, but I think he's adjusting to get closer to him. Rain has blown a canister. And we're the most wanted cunts in And when he looked away there, he looked to the side, not down. The country. See that slow head movement as well, guys. Watch this. When he looked back at him. But don't you worry. Oh, sorry. Let me go back further. Minister, and we're the most wanted cunts in the country. But don't you worry. And there's the whisper again, guys. And again, you know, when you're touching people, when you, it, that wasn't even a light touch either. That was very forceful. The way he got closer to him, he held eye contact. The way he slapped his body forcefully. You know, these are all dominant moves. Like... Kind of, this is my property. I can touch you whenever I want. I can touch you as as forcefully as I want. Kind of, I'm not saying hashtag me too, but the way that you go up to a friend and slap them forcefully on the back, it kind of says, look, I'm here. It's very dominant behavior. Um, you know, you're not tiptoeing around in life. And the fact that he has hit him there in a, in a friendly way, you know, it's a compassionate way, but the small smirk, the strong eye contact, moving closer, hitting him, these are very congruent behaviors and they all emit the same body language or the same message. And I think his name's Carl, isn't it? 
He's fantastic at this, one of the best in the world at doing this. And the character of Butcher, because of the congruency, is so compelling. I think us as men, we're drawn to this. And it doesn't stop here, he does it a few more times. Daddy's home. Number one, referring to himself as daddy. That's um, you know a dominant position in the hierarchy. If you were daddy, you know you'd assume that you are the leader of the house. And referring to himself as daddy again is congruent with the body language. It's congruent with the stare that he's doing here, the words that he's saying, the tonality he's saying them in, the whisper. Like everything needs to be as one, guys, and that's what he's so good at. And again, two slaps there on the arm. It's it's kind of what a, what a dad would do to a son. And that's why it's such dominant behavior. Now, he lets himself down here, but it's so slight, it doesn't matter. But I'll show you. So there, he's got his arm on Frenchie's back. He, he taps him with the right hand as well on the chest. So again, he is the more dominant figure here, but he's let Frenchie's arm go on top. So ideally, what you'd want to do is have your arm over the... Why is that not working? Oh, sorry, wrong tool. What you want to do is have this arm over the top, Frenchie's arm underneath, and then he'd slap him with the right hand as well. You can just see it in, slightly in the background. You can see the right hand come across. Trump does this with handshakes. He shakes with one hand and then touches them with the other hand. They made a joke in Horrible Bosses about that. Um, but let's just bring that back and see this again. So there we go. The right hand came in, as we can see. Let's watch this again. So the left arm's around him. Right hand comes in, taps him on the stomach, which is a very vulnerable area of the body. And, you know, if you, like grabbing somebody by the throat, that's a very aggressive move because that's a vulnerable area. You tap them on the stomach, again, that's a very vulnerable area. And you're kind of saying, I have access to these areas. It's massively dominant behavior. And uh, it would put you at the top of the hierarchy. But that's the end of the two clips, guys. I hope you enjoyed these two. Um... I, I look through a ton of butcher clips. There's not many where he's having these face-to-face -face confrontations. You know, a lot of it is him on the move or, you know, other scenes. It's more comedic value or beating somebody up. So it's very hard to get these scenes where he's doing this. If I find any more, I'll break him down again. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more in other episodes. Uh, but with the boys being quite new, there's quite a few. There's, there's not many clips on YouTube, so it's quite difficult. But I hope you enjoyed it, guys, as always. I hope you've learned a decent amount. I think... The fact that we broke down congruency and Butch is so good at it gives us something different to look at rather than repeating the same videos. But I'll speak to you guys soon and have a great weekend. Just quit being a cunt, that's what I'm saying.